Are you the type of person easily fooled by marketing materials? Do you have a sham wow in your house right now? Oh, I'm so sorry. Do you have one of those little chop it vegetable things? That's so much easier. It's not, is it? It doesn't really work for large meals. You sucked that day. Well, you might be tempted to upgrade your little Canon EOS R to an R6 Mark II. The better camera, is it? On paper, to some, not to us all. Oh, I found the flaws. This is better in a lot of ways. Yeah. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we're on the Canon EOS R 24mm 1.4, of course. I only have one lens. But still, thank you, Aiden Camera, for supplying the R6 Mark II. I could technically do a side by side with the 100 to 500 and just throw this in a 4K crop and it would like punch into 900 mil. I might do it, I might do that. So I can't film at the same time, but I will do side by sides. And the first thing that you may appreciate in the EOS R is color science. Next to me is a upgraded version of me who has no dates. He's never had a date. He actually once took a girl to a cricket museum and she was not impressed. He did not get laid. He did get a free sample of crickets, but he still has them in his pocket. And it's like, who are you doing here? Who are you doing is a word, a sentence, a phrase. Better color science, Kennedy Azar. Witness it. Now, I can't guarantee that the R6 was worse color science. It's very subjective. I might prefer that, but now we're seeing it. C-Log here, and that was C-Log 3. My first test, man, that wildlife video, my skit in here was just so noisy. I was like, wow, I just did auto ISO, let it ride. Did not realize you had to overexpose a couple stops. So that's on me. That is on me. So now we're on the R6 Mark II. And something I noticed immediately was 1080p looks worse in the R6 Mark II. I think it's line skipped. Frickin' skipping lines. Imagine you have a photocentric sensor with so many megapixels, you're like 6K resolution, and then you do a 1080p line skipped, like half the resolution of 1080p, which is already a fifth of your photographic potential. You're getting like one eighth of the potential of a camera with this line skippy bullshit. Do not deserve this. And I've noticed some strange auto exposing things. We're not in auto exposure right now, so I cannot show you, but let's switch into standard profile for a second to see, just in case I've ruined this grade, likely have, we just go standard straight out of camera. Who's better? Can it us, R or R62? Okay, now next to me, is a standard profiled budget hobo who once took his mother to a lawn bowling game. She did not realize that her son could be so cheap and just not spring forth. Did he, she get like popcorn? No, he brought roasted crickets again from his date. The previous time he still had them offered his mother crickets from a pocket. That's how cheap he is. I think we should spring for something better. We have standard profile, which is looking better. Is it any different? It better be slightly, it better not be. It better be Canon color science for both. That's what you expect from Canon. You expect a bunch of cripplings and nice colors, right? That's what I thought so. Did he do that already? Notice the Strangeness. I just noticed this for some reason. I held my arms up in a review for some reason and everything darkens dramatically really bad. Is it not doing it anymore? I don't know. Auto exposure behavior weird on both. Not really a plus or minus. Okay. This next thing you might prefer on the EOS R as we test the autofocus. So I'm just going to walk around and tell you about this feature. 
I don't like the on off button on that R6 Mark II at all. I don't love this one that it's on the left side, but why is Canon making this so difficult? Just, this is annoying. I want it right here or with a thumb. These are the only two fingers that should be able to do the on off. On the GH6, there we dream it. There we dream it. It's an easy thumb twitch. You get used to it. You get used to that. You can do it one-handed. On. Bow. On the Canon EOS R, that's a bitch that it's over there. You're like. It hurts. My back. This one, it's in the middle. It's right in the middle that no finger comfortably touches. It's like crack. Ow. How's the autofocus perform? Somewhat good. It was hunting quite a bit when I did my first video. Don't look at it, Canon. But now look at it. Look at it. It's not great. Okay, we're back on the EOS R to do the same thing, autofocus test, but tell you about a different feature that I hate. The dual card slot. Now you wouldn't think of this usually as a downside, but boy is it ever. So if you're just using this as a YouTube camera and it's staying there all the time, what I do on the EOS R, okay, I'm done the video, cool. Reach around, ba bam take that out, boom, going. Now I go back in, it's like, okay, I can just easily eye it. It's one slot, Not, nothing to get confused about. I have to, it's somewhat more annoying to do this blinded. Which slot is that? Okay, I think that's the right slot. Might not be. Dual cards. Oh, my wedding. Oh no, the bride's gonna miss her shot. Come here, Stacy. Oh, the love of your life. Oh no, I just saw him cheating on you in the washroom with wedding cake and Stacy. You want those memories? You can have them. How we doing? Good? That was a little slower. Noticeably slower. That's that's not on. Don't blame old ESR. Don't blame old boy here. It's a little slower. That's, that's not even on my list. It should be. Is it more reliable? There's no reason it would be. I am going to do, let's go outside. Not yet. Not yet. Now, one of the biggest reasons to avoid buying the Canon R6 Mark II through my affiliate links or at Aiden Camera is its lack of 4K crop that we're witnessing right now. We may be noticing that that's a 24mm lens, that's a telephoto zoom, same focal length because of the crop. Sure, it's a problem in some cultures, but I don't mind it because I never use 4K for almost anything. And when I do want to, I find it hilarious that I can punch in so far and gain quality. Usually it's like, oh, I want to show something. I'll crop in. Oh, I lost quality. Not on the EOS R. We got your back. You want to see something further away? Boom. Enhanced. And then you could crop that further and get like 15 times your focal length. 4K. That was not easy to line up. And it's not lined up at all, but I was disappointed that the R6 1080p was so bad, you kind of have to shoot 4K now. It's like, it's kind of nice that you have 4K 60 with no crop versus 4K 24p with a huge crop. Okay, I'm guessing R6 is getting the point for this one, but whatever. I find it fun to shoot in 4K sometimes. I'm at 500 mils. It's a good shot. Don't try to pretend it isn't. Do I look stupid with this curved back? It's an awkward shot to get in. I have to lean over this counter thing that I've created. Yes, I did find it on the street. So what? Let's go outside and see what's the better vlogger and who has the better slow-mo. I think the OSR has pretty nice 720p in manual focus, if I'm not mistaken. 
It's a good shot. So is that. May the autofocus be as reliable as Panasonic is now. So I've had a chance to look at the footage and it seems every point I made has been debunked. The 1080p looks just as good in the R6 as it does the R. Color science pretty much the same, if not better, on the R6. My life is a lie, my friend. So we're now on the vlog portion of the episode on the Canon EOS R. Same lens for both. Glimmer glass. I switched the glimmer glass for a 1 instead of the 5. I returned the 5. It was a bit much. And we have just digital stabe. I find it's actually usable. It's better than Sony. Better than Sony Ibis. Unless you actually walk. But that was going to be one of my pluses. If you have the ultra wide angle lenses, not having Ibis is actually a benefit. You don't get the warpy corners. Just put lens stabe plus digital. You got something. All right, let's switch to the R6 II and then talk about the final points, which will be debunked immediately. Not before I show you that 4K is a viable option still on the EOS R. Who's behind me? There is a dog. We're matching shirts and hats. I'll go. They lie to us because it's subtle. They want us walking through so many puddles. They set the world up for you to struggle. Most of us could use a body double. Body double. You can't catch somebody else's troubles. Even if you bumble through the rubble. In life we tumble through the puzzle. Cause we're gullible. to the R6 Mark II in 4K, but just standard profile, so I don't have to huff and puff while I edit these files. Just IBIS right now. Is it smoother than the EOS R was with just digital? I'm trying to be careful. I just did a slow motion test. So what's it like 720p versus 1080? Okay, let's switch into digital stabe and see if that helps. IBIS plus digital. No lens stabe. Okay, IBIS plus digital stabe. That should be Panasonic level. If it's not, then we all know the S5 II is right down the corner. For 500 less US dollars, Canadians like 800, nine maybe, plus a lens, a 20 to 60 kit lens. Oh boy. Trust me, there's still reasons to get an EOS R. I have a list, it's in my pocket. Let's switch into C log. Back to 1080p, is the dynamic range superior? What are you doing? You're supposed to love my face. Slowly. All right, we're in C-Log now. Canon does not care about the face when you're in C-Log. It's such a huge difference. When you're in standard profile, it usually exposes for the face. When you're in C-Log, it just highlight priority at all cost. How? 1080p, plus one exposure cup, and I'll bring it down. Mm -hmm. I gotta be honest with you, it's a solid little upgrade to the EOS R. There's not a lot of reasons to get it. I mean, the image is just as good. That's the funny thing. It's not like world's better, especially in 1080p, but the fact that you can do 4K uncropped with autofocus and auto exposure in C-Log, the EOS R, you have to be manual everything. There's a lot to like, there's a lot to like, and there's not a lot of downsides. And now you have 180 frames, it looks pretty good. If you're running in a forest and there's people after you, you need to hide. I think Canon's what you want to be filming yourself on. In Panasonic, that's manual focus only. I don't know, man. The IBIS might be better in Panasonic, though, as we're witnessing right now. Not so buenos. I tell you, one of the only advantages to the EOS R is that it's 30 megapixels, instead of, or 33 maybe, I forget. 
but not much more than 24. You probably won't even see a difference. No, I'm not going to take a photo. That goes against my religion. Is this better than the current competition? Sony a7 IV, Panasonic S5 II, Fuji X-H2, not the S. From what I've seen, I haven't tested the a7 IV much, only in a store. It's just that Sony color science, what's the point? 4K60 with a huge crop, only 120 frames in HD. I think it's between the R6, the Fuji, and the Panasonic. We've eliminated Sony, even though they're probably the best one. Canon color science cannot be beaten. Panasonic better stabe. This has better autofocus in all modes, no cripples. Low light performance, nobody cares. I'm thinking Fuji, even though it has its firmware update, nobody has tested it in video, so we don't know if it's even improved. Bunch of photographers over there. Canon has a dreamy filter. We're gonna test all the creative filters now as we talk about today's sponsor, my mother. She raised me. She took care of me when I was sick. She used to buy me fruit. She said, what, you're spending how much a week? 200, huh? Oh boy, we're both on welfare. Ah, uh, I'll make it work. And I don't know how she did it, but she did it. She took care of me. What a dream. Oh wow, look at this, the cinema is ours. Oh man, this is a movie now. Oh hey Barney, it's been like, what, six years? Since high school, how you been, man? I've been good, just living in a tent out here. It's not bad, it's a lot of freedom. <laughs> How's the house? Oh, it's great, we just installed this new furnace. Frickin' thing heats up any room in six seconds. Oh, it's amazing. We have a butler now. How's your heat in the tent? It's not good, Gary. It's really cold, actually. It's winter, and it's a tent. It's nylon. You can't, I tried a heater, it burnt down my last tent. That, that took a month of panhandling to buy up again. Life is not great. Can I come over for dinner? Yeah, about that. Um, we're vegan now. And I, I know you like chicken wings. So we can't actually have you in our house due to past chicken wing smells coming off you. It would upset our dog. You understand. I remember a time when I had a dog and we wanted to go for a walk. And I said, come here, buddy. You'll be okay. We crossed a busy street. He didn't have a leash. I figured he could make it. He couldn't. He got hit by a car and I killed him. This is Cannon's memory feature. And that was a painful one. Thanks for nothing, Cannon. What a memory. I know these are gimmicks for the most part, but I like stuff like this. This is almost like Fuji film simulations, only cool and unusable. I like that. This is a dramatic black and white, and it's, it's gritty. This is needs to be happening in cameras. There should be creative looks that a camera company comes up for, even though they're... comes up for? Oh, I should be arrested. You know what's weird? I don't think I had digital stabe on. Canon changed the menu for this. You press digital stabe on, it didn't seem to even crop, but then you press info and then you can go in and do enhanced or this one. I think it wasn't even on before. Even though it clicked on, you had to go into a further menu. Not sure I love that change. It's unusable. So now digital stabe plus IBIS on for the first time, most likely. And then we'll do enhanced and we're in 4K C-Log. These are hard to edit files probably, I'm gonna leave. The cinema is yours, my friend. Enhance Stabe on. Now you're like approaching the Canon EOS R crop. Still not even as much. Wow, not bad, not bad. I'm no longer in plus one exposure comp. So I'm just heading to Riverdale Farm. I got the GH6 and the 100 to 500 for this. We're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. Can Panty Boy Micro Loser beat the Canon full frame? Maybe, but so far I'm actually pretty impressed with this. As a YouTuber camera, might be up there with the best. 
like you get the best color science, decent slow-mo autofocus, stabilization maybe, decent EF lenses at least. There's some budget options for you RF freaks, 15 to 30, whatever that variable aperture is. Toniature, I'll leave. Are you buying one through my affiliate links or Aiden Camera? Let's all go to Aiden Camera tonight. I know I want to, to return this. That's not fun for me. It's more fun for you to go there. You get something, I'll leave.